Okay, so we're going to be starting to talk about the different animal phyla in class. And there are two alternative phylogenies. One that is the one that I learned um, and is based upon structural characteristics and the revised one that is based upon molecular data, specifically DNA. So this again demonstrates that things are always kind of changing based upon all this new information that we are obtaining. Oh, that rhymed. Anyway, so let's look at these characteristics. This is my phylogeny. These are my animal phyla. We are not gonna be studying all of these, but there are a lot of them that we are gonna be looking at. Um, actually, we can, uh, cross off some of these. So we're not going to talk about the stentophora. So I can cross that one out. The ectoprocta, no. And brachiopoda, no. And the other ones that we are going to be talking about. So if we look at these, these are characteristics. Metazoans, those are all the animals. They are believed to have evolved from a single-celled organism called a flagellate. <laughs> and there's a colony of them, and then they became multicellular. So the peripherans are metazoans, as are all of us, we would also be metazoans. We then see the evolution of tissues. So you metazoan means that we have the evolution of tissues. Then we get to see the evolution of bilateral symmetry. All of these organisms have bilateral symmetry, but you'd be like, what? This is echinoderms, this is the sea stars. They have radial symmetry, but weirdly as juveniles, as embryos or larvae, they actually have bilateral symmetry. So they lose their bilateral symmetry during development and they become radially symmetric adults. Okay, we also have the difference between deuterostomes and protostomes. So this has to do with embryonic development and which opening becomes the mouth and which opening becomes the anus. So we put those together. We are deuterostomes, but so are sea stars, echinoderms. And so this is why of all of the invertebrates, we are most closely grouped with the echinoderms. This is not what I would think. I would think that I am more closely related to an octopus because octopus are smart but no, I'm more closely related to a sea star. Okay, the other interesting thing about this, when we look at the protostomes, all of these other invertebrates are protostomes, but then we get hmm, segmentation, the segmented earthworm and the segmentation of the arthropods. Um, those are put together in this particular phylogeny. Okay. So the alternative phylogeny, which is now the one that is thought to be more correct, we'll notice that something has happened here where we now have the arthropods not being grouped with the segmented worms, but being grouped with the round worms. This means that they are, they created this new group called ecdysozoans. So ecdysis means a shedding of an exoskeleton Arthropods have to do this when they grow. Nematodes also have kind of an exoskeleton. So that's why they are grouped together, but this is actually based upon molecular data. Then we have the annelids being more closely related to say, for example, mollusks. Mollusks are not segmented, annelids are segmented, but they are put into this weird group called the lophotrochozoans. And lopho means this ciliated feeding structure in some of them. Trochozoan means this weird trochophore larvae. So don't worry about what that term means, but it just means that now we see segmentation evolving twice. So it's in the annelids and it is also in the arthropods. So there is not a common ancestor that has segmentation, for example. And so all of the rest of it is pretty much identical, but these two groups are different in the alternative cladogram.